everybody. This is the Coffee with a Geek uh, program. My name is Andy Wheelock, and it is, uh, we're still in July, summer, we'll just say, of 2022. We're, uh, I know in the education world, we're kind of regrouping and trying to refresh and get ourselves ready to go for uh, what's going to be a great year. I really believe that. So uh, with me today is Lisa Rasmussen, Lisa Rasmussen, and she is from Sweden, and she works for uh, Microsoft, and she is a cloud solution architect. And her focus uh, there is Power Platform and Microsoft 365. I brought Lisa on just because I wanted to kind of get a perspective from a tech person in the field, as well as someone from a different country. So uh, Lisa, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be on your show. All right. Well, We'll start off with the easiest question. Do you drink <laughs> coffee and uh, what's your favorite blend? <clears throat> Short drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Can't live without coffee. It's the first thing I drink in the morning. I need to have two or three cups before I like my brain is awake. So this is maybe a bit boring, but my favorite coffee is cappuccino. <laughs> okay. That's not boring. A little, okay. a little fancy, yeah. right? Yeah. Or just... <laughs> As I drink at home, instant coffee with milk in it. Can I really, say that on Really, really, <laughs> just straight instant. Okay. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good. Well, yep. you know, I brought you on. I, I again, I wanted to kind of dig into the real tech tech side. Our world is yep. driven by technology today, and really, there's there's jobs, there's opportunities, there's you know tech jobs out there for people um, that didn't exist just a few yeah. years ago, maybe even a decade ago. So first of all, just tell me about your work at Microsoft. And, you know, again, usually I ask, what was your educational journey? But what is kind of your, your journey to getting the job that you're in? So let's talk about how you got there and then what your job is. Yeah, sure. So my job role or my uh, ending here up at uh, Microsoft was uh, quite a uh, yeah, it's been like a zigzag, you know, it's not been a straightforward career. It's uh, I started, I went to drama school for two years uh, at a college uh, or high school, what you say. And uh, then I worked a bit uh, within uh, healthcare and then I started working for some university here in Sweden. And then I met someone there who was in the IT business and uh, they asked me to come and join their company to sit and work in a help desk, you know, where you have all the support questions you can imagine from printers to uh, office programs to, yeah, their mainframe systems and so on. And that was a great uh, way to learn the IT business and, uh, yeah, a lot of things around infrastructure and so on. And after that, uh, I began to be more of a webmaster. So I started building intranets and that's how I uh, discovered SharePoint, Microsoft SharePoint. And uh, I started working with that in 2003. And at that time I attended some, uh, you know, these full week courses that we had at that time. And uh, I learned a lot about SharePoint and started building intranets document solutions, uh, workflows and building forms and all that, that's connected to an intranet. And I've been working with that the last 18 years. So um, when I was headhunted by Microsoft last year, uh, I was quite happy to, I work a little bit with SharePoint, but my focus has changed now into Power Platform, uh, building apps, flows, and managing the Power Platform, the administration tools of it. So my job has kind of changed um, recent year, actually, which I also enjoy. And it's been a fantastic journey to like uh, start off somewhere and then you end up <laughs> in the total other direction. But um, it's been a great journey. And now I'm so happy to be at Microsoft. It's the best job I've ever had. So... You know, you, you you talked in a lot of tech lingo, which I'm, I'm following mostly. <laughs> but for those people, again, my show is usually kind of educational technology piece. Can you talk and again, just help me as well as anyone kind of wrap their head around what it what is SharePoint? And then maybe even give kind of a, 
a, a layman's definition of what, what you're working on now, which is a power platform and, and Microsoft. And, and maybe can you tailor that to what, what education might? Yeah, sure. So uh, Microsoft SharePoint, that is a platform that is used to uh, build intranets, you know, like you have WordPress, you have a, a tool that you can build a website in, and we have SharePoint as a platform where you can build uh, intranet, uh, internal network uh, sites. And um, the trainings I've had there is more actually of shorter trainings, you know, like um, we have a company here in Sweden called Informator, and they hold a lot of these SharePoint for administrators, SharePoint for developers, and so on. But we also have uh, a two-year education here in Sweden where um, that's called the EC uh, trainings, where they actually do the whole Microsoft 365 uh, education track. So they learn everything from you know, Microsoft 365 is a cloud service where you can have, we have Teams, that is the meeting uh, platform. We have SharePoint, that is the internet uh, platform. And then we have the power tools, the power platform that I'm working with. And uh, that consists of uh, power apps where you build apps, you know, like you can use on your mobile phone or on your desktop. And um, that's often used, you know, for checklists, maybe for people who come in on board and in the company, or we build tools, you know, to uh, help people access information a lot more easier than they have to go to the computer and maybe use a lot of systems. They can use one app to access all these systems. So Power Apps is a very powerful tool uh, that I work quite a lot with. And then we have the other products in the family that is used to support business processes, help uh, users reach data much more easy uh, than it should be uh, normally. So Power Platform, and also we have the Power BI, which is business intelligence, where we can produce you know, graphs and statistics in a nice looking way through Power BI. So the Microsoft 365 is a huge, platform that contains a lot of uh, uh, apps and services and that is the cloud service from Microsoft. I hope that this clarifies something around what I'm working with. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. I mean, <laughs> yeah. and, and it also kind of, I think it seems like there's a lot of moving parts to that. So what would be, so your recommendation for say a student coming out of school today of high school again in, in the mm. States, um, if they wanted to go into technology, what are kind of the, the first steps to getting where you are and to, to, again, understand all the moving parts that are going on? Because it sounds really dynamic and, and, and an interesting job. And it sounds from just you talking about it, it sounds like there's never a dull moment in, in, your, in your work. That is true. And I must say, just to, to speak for myself, uh, I have not attended university. I have... Uh... I have worked my way into this business. Uh, like I said, I started in the help desk and that was kind of my training. Uh, but uh, I would say yeah, people read to engineers maybe uh, within technology or uh, they attend, like I said, this uh, very hands-on education that we have a two-year training. It is um, proper education for being a Microsoft 365 a developer or administrator like I am, you know, more like the IT pro part where you actually maybe work more with administering uh, servers or uh, the cloud services. So, but that is so hands-on, that training. Um, and that is in Sweden. I'm not sure what they have abroad, but I would say maybe, yeah, an engineer. That would be like a... Uh, don't you have like MIT and, and sure. universities? Yeah. Like, yeah. So I would say maybe start there. Uh, what they might lack, uh, or if you want to be directly into Microsoft 365, I don't, I'm not sure how specific they are into that. I, I guess you have a broad learning there, um, going deeper into technology. But to find these more uh, specific uh, trainings or educations, they might be a bit shorter. And I think they also have a diversity in ages, you know, in this easy training we have in Sweden, 
uh, they are between, you know, like young people up to people who have been working very long and just want to change a career. So not necessarily only young people. So they are very, um, I'm not sure of the word, what you call it in, in English, but uh, I can send you, I can post, we can post a link to that, uh, to that training. So you can uh, have that in the show notes, maybe. Sure, that so would they can be read great. more about the training there. Yeah, because I think it needs to be more specific if you want to really be uh, deep inside into Microsoft 365, uh, at least the platform there. What I hear you saying is that there's a lot of different kind of uh, pathways to to technology, to technology careers. It yeah. can be the MIT pathway, the the university pathway, but it also can be uh, online certifications and uh, specific, uh, you know, Office 365 certifications that you can get. So it, I, I think that's a great kind of way to think of it. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of a hockey fan. I, I, I know Sweden's are big, Sweden is big in hockey. So, um, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> when I think of it, you know, when I think of the NHL, there's a lot of different pathways. There's not just a college pathway that, you know, no. say here in the States, you know, football, the only way you can get to NFL is really go through college. But <clears throat> with hockey, there's a, a bunch of different varieties of ways to go from juniors to, you know, national teams to colleges and universities. Is that kind of what you're saying in technology too? There's a lot yeah, of different exactly. pathways. Yeah. And I also think to have a great foundation, you know, coming from you know, the basics and going up and then deciding what path you want to take. I think that has a strong uh, advantage in this business that uh, for me, I learned, you know, all about the infrastructure, the, you know, active directories, the DNS and uh, how does the website or IIS, you know, all these terms that you need to a little bit understand when you start working in this, uh, in the IT business. I got that through actually working with it hands-on, learning by doing. I love that. <laughs> but I also attended these very specific, you know, SharePoint trainings uh, that I was excellent teachers and you got really spot on. And, and that is because I was self-interested uh, in this. I wanted to learn. And then, of course, another track is doing certifications. I have now four certifications. So I've taken on Power Platform, Microsoft Teams, uh, and so on. So I have a few other that's a bit more specific, but doing the certification tracks is a really good way of learning also because you need to study. And then when you do the certification, the exam, you feel yourself that, okay, I understand. I have a feeling of what this is. So that's also a good way to like fill up your, uh, your, uh, your learning uh, and your knowledge and the competence around uh, these tools. But also, you know what, I sit a lot in my free time and dig down into issues and problems. And I've always been interested in that. So uh, having a huge interest is also a great start if you want to learn this, I think. So tell me about the uh, WIT podcast, how it started <laughs> and where it's going. Yeah, the Wit Girls podcast. And that's one of the reasons actually uh, I'm talking about learning in free time because uh, in 2017, uh, I decided to start the podcast. I have been blogging since 2007 uh, because I wanted to have a place, you know, when I found a problem, I wanted to describe it and then add a solution. And not only to help others, but to also for my own sake, because sometimes I go back and see, hmm, how did I solve that? And oh yeah, that's what, <laughs> you know, memory can sometimes be a bit bad. So I go back and often when I search, I end up on my own blog. So I think sharing is caring. And uh, then I realized that doing blog posts and blogging, it takes a lot of time and effort. You need to really write every step really carefully. So if someone is following that, you should be able to do that. And you need to have screenshots. It's just so much, uh, yeah, so much work. So I decided why not have a podcast and put in more information at the same time and uh, also have more information and experience easier spread through the podcast. So that's why I started that. And what does yeah. WIT stand for? Just for those who haven't seen it. Right. So women in tech. Yeah. 
But this podcast is not only for women, it's for anyone who wants to learn about the Microsoft 365 platform. So, yeah, it was just uh, some name I came up with, (laughs) starting from WIT. And WIT can also be WIT, you know, like WIT. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's what I liked about it is, and that's what kind of drew my attention and and wanting to interview you is that um, the technology does provide avenues for just so many different learners, as well as, you know, if we're going to talk about gender, it's, there's opportunities there for, for everybody. It's really about, Absolutely. it's really about your wit, your, your intelligence. That's true. That's there's true. So, so great opportunities. Yeah. Thanks. And happy you found my podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I, a lot of what I do is uh, just see people that are posting good stuff on Twitter and when I saw you posting some, you know, some interesting stuff. And again, I liked really your story. And like most times I'm dealing with educators and technology uh, folks, but I really wanted to talk to you about, you know, technology is, is everywhere. And, mm. you know, uh, you know I, I want to uncover how to get jobs in today's technology landscape. And so you were a person that I said, hmm, I'd like to find out your story and how you got where you are. So, yeah, happy, happy to hear that. And uh, like I said, I think, and like you also mentioned, there are so many pathways to do it. But uh, if you want to learn something really specific, I think you need to maybe go in a more specific track uh, so that they focus on what you want to learn I mean I can just see myself where I go to learn things today I'm not sure if the kids are doing this today or the young people I think they do but if I want to learn something I first since I'm working with Microsoft I of course go to their learning pages they have amazing uh, learning pages from Microsoft where you can follow a track for a specific product or a specific app and then you have a knowledge check after each cha- chapter. That's really good. And then at the end, you can certify yourself. That's one way to do it. Uh, and they also have a lot of short videos, you know, like a bit fun videos to watch if you want to learn just a small tutorial. And then the other natural step for me is, of course, YouTube. I mean, I love YouTube. <laughs> have so many people doing tutorials. And yeah, like yourself, you have a channel. I have a channel. And anyone can post anything and if i want to search for something i o- always go to you know search for tutorials on youtube mm-hmm. so that's an amazing place also to learn i think yeah and i really think you hit on again why i was really fascinated to talk to you is that you know i, I think education is a li- maybe a little bit behind or maybe we're really not seeing that big picture i think Again, I'm, I'm talking from the States here. I think we still like our traditional ways. And again, I do too. I, I don't, I'm not kind of pointing fingers at anybody. Um, but I think, you know, the, the paper pencil desks thing is. Yeah. You know, we have so much power in creating video. Like you said, you know, YouTube is such a powerful learning to, tool mm. and we're dabbling in it in education. And, I'm, and again, I'm not saying we need to you know, throw out paper and pencil because I do believe there's value in that, that technology as well, especially from tactile learning pieces. But I, I think we're, we're just scratch, tip, you know, we're on the tip of the iceberg of what technology can do as far as education goes. So um, what are your thoughts about, you know, you've mentioned your pathway was not, you learned what you, you're where you are really not because of, of a brick and mortar school, but of a digital learning and school. Do you think that's where education is going? Do you, can you see maybe use your, uh, you know, crystal ball and tell me what you see the future of learning from your standpoint of where you are and maybe just in Microsoft as well. No, that's a big yeah, question. I'm, <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just thinking just about an idea now, but you know, we have Netflix, we have HBO and all these streaming services. Come on, no one watches like the old old school TV, you know, with mm-hmm. the changing channels and yeah. things any longer. So, I mean, I don't at least, I only have like all the play TV play apps. And I think I want to, we are more and more thinking 
we want freedom in our work, freedom in our education also, you know, like having a channel where you could have all these education so you could choose tracks, you can choose whenever it suits you to follow a training. And that is, of course, going to YouTube or attending any other companies that are more streamlining uh, videos and educations. Um, we have a site here in Sweden called Moderskeppet, the mothership, and they are distributing training videos there. So you can go in, choose a track, and you can start following a series of education tracks there. You can learn something. I'm not sure you can maybe go and certify yourself after that, but at least you have taken the training and you got an idea what it is about. So you can start like getting an idea. Is this something I want to learn? So I think just as we select, I want to watch a TV series on Netflix, I would like to follow a training track online. And when it suits me, maybe I have a work on the, say, on, on the side or if I do my trainings on the side, but you know, we can do, we can combine things. We don't need to do exclusively just one thing. And I think that's the freedom of the choice. I think that becomes more and more important. That's just the feeling I have if I look in the crystal ball. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, and I, I don't want to, <clears throat> from your standpoint, you know, I, I see the power and the potential of technology, but I'm also worried about, um, you know, the, the, the downside of technology, the social media, and especially with teens and kids, uh, I think, you know, as a teenager on social media, it seems awful overwhelming. And I think can get, yeah. uh, I think it can get, can get hurtful. I think it could get too much um, thoughts, just, you know, technology, maybe some of the dark, dark side of, of technology. What are, what are your thoughts from your standpoint there? You mean about the, the bad things with it? You well, mean? just social media, maybe the overwhelming aspects of social media, especially yeah. for teens. Yeah. I think first of all, too much time spent on social media and it's like a waste of time i i stopped using facebook because i only use it to chat with people and find events to do because i'm a big music fan and i keep track of all the concerts and everything that's coming but for just sitting like this you know and swap that's no i stopped using it because it's a waste of time it doesn't give you any value so i think uh, I see kids, you know, uh, or uh, I see people in my own age also. I mean, it's not just kids. It's everyone who's like sitting on, you know, the tube, uh, just scrolling up and down, pointless information. And we are just drowning in all these, all these impressions and all these uh, videos that people are throwing at us. So I think, first of all, it could be a big waste of time. But on the other hand, uh, that's the way they communicate today. I mean... I see my, uh, you know, my brother's children, they communicate with Snapchat and this uh, texting and, you know, and the phone is going like crazy all the time. So right. that's their platform. I think they might learn to handle it a bit better maybe than, than our generation or the generation below us. I think that they will learn to control it a bit more. That's what I hope at least. Mm -hmm. But maybe kind of, tapping into what you say there needs to be a balance and uh yeah you know, maybe just teaching kids that you know it can also be a huge time waster for lack of a better term yeah and maybe you know focusing on some of those and also just you know again i i worry about the the emotions that come from that you know if you've you know mm. you've been on twitter and you post any sort of comment you know you're going to sometimes get brushed back and, and people negative comments and you're even going to get some people um i want to say you know grifters or you know uh, people that'll 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 come at you with with some negative comments as well and, and that can be something that you have to work through and as a teenager you know i know i, I grew up in a time without this high-powered technology Mm. Just having to deal with those emotions and again, cyber bullying and, and, and the, the pieces. Yeah, that's horrible. That's horrible. I'm happy I have never experienced it myself, but uh, I, I can imagine that the kids today, the bullying goes on online. That's where it's happening. Right. So I can imagine it's really tough. And I'm so happy I didn't have social media when I was a teenager. <laughs> 
all the things I would post there. So <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it is now time for the speed geek questions. Thank you for your thoughts and ideas. Um, a lot of good food for thought there. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of spin the dial here. So what? We'll we'll skip the favorite social network because I think we answered that one. But what's your favorite app? Let's talk about that. Yeah, Spotify. <laughs> oh, okay. So music person. So <laughs> yeah. music podcasts yes. or both. Now I oh, I listen to podcasts. I also I have my own podcast on Spotify as well. But that when you yeah that is that is the first thing that came to mind. That's that's like Spotify music. I can never live with that. So that's the first uh, thing I open almost in the day and I start playing music in the morning and then it goes on during the day the night. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite type of tablet? So iPad, phone. I mean, I guess we could. Outside of a computer, what's your favorite tablet? Yeah, I've used iPad many years ago, but I, 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 it's too big to use as a mobile phone and it's too small to make anything useful like on a computer. So I would say uh, I love my laptop. Yeah. Okay, that works. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, are you a gamer and what's your game? Yeah, I, I've had a lot of Xboxes. <laughs> <laughs> and right now I have my uh, Quest too so i have a vr headset yeah okay yeah. what's your favorite uh, game in there yeah so pistol whip is one of my favorites because <laughs> they have like this cowboy version new where you like a uh, cowboy yeah so much fun and also i have a uh, star wars uh, vr although i'm not a star wars fan like that but uh, right. that star wars pinball game that's so much fun and in the pandemic I was so happy to have my VR headset because I stood there next to Harrison Ford and like uh, Yoda was there and like <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> so you felt one. like you were there, right? Yeah. You were next to him, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All those, uh, not Sasquatch, but all those guys were there. So I had like company from them and that was, uh, yeah, that was a fun world to begin to. Yeah, I got a Quest 2. Uh, my wife bought it for me for a couple of years ago for Christmas. Oh, yeah? And I thought, eh, you know, I wasn't ready for VR. But once I got in, I was like, they've come a long way. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you ever do Beat Saber. Beat Saber is a yes. fun one. So yep. um, that one I kind of like. And it's nice. I just like it for my concentration as well as just movement, you know. But uh, yeah. I, 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 I do see the future in VR. This was so fun, Andy. The first time I, I put on the headset and I was in this lounge, you know, when they, they have like this game where you can start learning how the VR works. And I was like, yeah, cool. So I held my <laughs> controls and then they, they had a table and I, and I was like, okay, I can put my control on the table. It was a virtual table. <laughs> Boom, right it. in the floor. <laughs> yes, you have they to get used this. to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was so much fun. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it's not a real table, <laughs> but it's, it's such a cool world to get into and how you can just fool your brain that you're there. It's, it's amazing. It is. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think, um, <laughs> and they're just talking now. I think they're making the transition where you don't need the Facebook account for the quest. Yeah, so they are, yep. I think that's the you piece don't. for education that we were kind of hoping for because, you know, schools don't want yeah. kids to have Facebook accounts per se, unless they want them, of course, but they, they'd oh. like to have that separate account. And I think that's, yeah. I, I think that's what education is looking for. They want to get into VR, but uh, they want to keep it uh, away from say, just a social media platform and, yeah, and when men you mentioned that, I mean, we uh, Microsoft has a lot of focus on this augmented reality, you know, like mixing AR and VR, you know, augmented reality, like Pokemon thing, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, so they have it for educational purposes. So let's say you have a surgeon and he's going to make a really difficult uh, surgery and he can, through this AR, uh, he can get the instructions, you know, like, he can see the things on the body right. because it's projecting yeah. where he's going to put the, the knife and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, and, and you can have uh, products, you can be uh, like holograms inside or avatars and you can stand around the table working together, even though you're not physically there. So that's really cool when you bring the VR and the AR into the work world and you can 
have educations, you can um, do things together, even though you're not in the same physical place. I think that's really cool. And that's really the future, I would think, I to have more, more AI and more uh, virtual uh, reality into yeah. work. Yeah, I think that's coming. All right, last question. What's your favorite way to unplug from technology? Right, so I mentioned a little bit, but music is a, a, a huge interest. I love to attend concerts and uh, I have a record player, you know, so I play my vinyl records and I recently discovered that I like to play drums. So I would like to start playing drums. So All right. I'm thinking about... <laughs> <laughs> buying my own drum set I think I need to buy the the digital ones because my neighbors would maybe not appreciate I have a drum set in my apartment <laughs> yeah but uh, music and just walking and you know traveling that's that's what I do to unplug good. walking is really good for relaxation all right well, Lisa, thank you so much it was great talking with you I'll be uh, following you still on Twitter and your your podcast and keep up the great work Thank you so much. It was great being on your show. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye.